topic, lithium battery. Why do we want to research lithium battery? Um, let's first scare everybody a little bit. If we do not do that, the ocean will rise and uh, we all go into uh, have neighbor with a fish. And uh, this is going to happen in 2012. Um, of course, that didn't happen, but uh, it's going to happen. Unless everybody drives uh, electrical cars. So that's the motivation behind why do we need to study battery research, because a, a battery is basically everywhere, and uh, using new technology and new, new energy uh, will actually uh, help us to make the air more clean and many different things. Um, lithium battery is a, a very high performance, uh, small, uh, uh, small volume, very lightweight of technology. We all wear one of these in, in our phones, and uh, it has a very a lot of advantages over a different kind of battery technology, and that's why we focus on the lithium battery. <coughs> uh, there's a lot of research uh, using microscope technologies, and uh, let me see if this is working. And uh, uh, we see a lot of uh, works uh, using SEM, and a lot of works in the AFM, and so on and so forth, and that's not uh, my expertise. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, by looking at the, the various different research using SEM, and AFM is that a lot of work that we study the surface layer of the electrode of this battery are based on uh, ex situ. What well, ex situ means that you, you, you finish your charge, discharge, and you cut open your cell, you take out the electrode, and then you put it in the microscope and you observe them. It's ex situ. What does it mean that the whatever the things that you put on there is already dead, it's already frozen? Ex situ. And it's not as to my opinion, as um, exciting compared to Institute. Uh, the reason we choose AFM and S S STM to do uh, this type of work is that uh, it has unique capabilities. And uh, uh, one of the things, it's, it's very high resolution. This is the STM I mentioned. And this is, this Im these images are taken in copper sulfate solution as we charge the surface and then form a single layer of a copper on the surface of gold, and then the, you, you observe it when the reaction is happening as it happens. So first thing is uh, in situ, uh, uh, high resolution, and second is in situ. You, you observe it. There's some more interesting question. Here's another. It's it's just the electro plating of a copper on the surface of gold, and you can see the things happening as it happens in real time. Uh, here's another. This is a, a com combination of uh, 100 images of a very simple experiment of a piece of calcite that is uh, exposed to acidic water. So you can see the things dissolving as it dissolves. So this is a very unique for atomic force microscope compared to the other um, high resolution like SEM, TEM, is that you can see things happen as it happens. Now, uh, next of course you need to combine the uh, AFM STM with another piece of equipment which is called, called a potential stat. We control the potential of your working electrode, which is the electrode you want to study. And you're going to have a counter electrode, you're going to have a reference electrode. Uh, so you need to have a potential stat to control these uh, electrodes. So you combine these two, you build uh, AFM STM combined with the uh, electrochemistry, electrochemical cell. Uh, this is a picture of the original manual of uh, um, our AFM combined with the uh, electrochemistry electrochemical cell, and these are basic essential components here. And later I'll tell you what's the problem with this, uh, these, this, uh, this design. So here uh, is the electrode you want to study, uh, which is this piece of uh, either metal or graphite and so on and so forth. So that is the things you want to look at it. And second, you're going to have a country electrode that form a, uh, 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 that, that, uh, that allow the, the, the carriers, uh, cations and ions to, to, to be absorbed here and then form a cell. And you can have a reference electrode which uh, uh, have very, li very little current and therefore you can measure the uh, potential more precise. Uh, well, one of the problems I can tell you is that uh, lithium is a very active metal, and when you want to do lithium battery research, you go to this lithium battery research laboratory. One of the things you'd see immediately, right in front of you, is uh, they always have arrays and arrays of glove boxes. The reason is that lithium is very afraid of oxygen and moisture, and you cannot handle them in air. Uh, that's one thing. Second is that, uh, that uh, you, you, uh, you want to get rid of all the moistures and, and the, all this. 
So that's the first thing. And the second is, if you look at all these things, and the, this is how this electrochemistry cell is putting together. It, it was it's very good design, very small and very precise, everything is good. However, you look at all the little detailed things here. They're all very small. And later I'll tell you why this is a problem. Uh, well, you want to get rid of the uh, oxygen and moisture and uh, uh, various, uh, in order to have you to study the, the, the electrochemical cell using AFMSTM, we actually had the many various designs of uh, glove boxes basically protect your sample and electrochemical cell from the moisture, from the uh, oxygen outside. And these are a couple of different designs of, of glove boxes. And I actually used this block up as did a lot of re research. Now, there is still uh, some fundamental problems here. The only problem is that the glass box is built with um, plexiglass. And we know plexiglass actually absorbs water. And therefore, you, it's very difficult for you to maintain uh, a very high purity environment that is no water there. There's always a little bit of water here. So that's another problem. Uh, this is, it's, it's a brilliant design. I actually worked in a workshop in a, in a guard box company and I sit with a, a worker and we actually draw these things and build the whole thing together side by side. But there's some fundamental problems. You cannot get over basically the material itself. So ultimately, we tried two different ways of work and this is one of the work that the, that's, that's done actually successful, not very easy, but successful, is we actually put the entire AFM inside the glove box because only then, you can maintain the moisture level and oxygen level at very, very low level. That's the only way, because then the commercial or professional glove box, not only it actually isolates the, the atmosphere, it also has a catalyst to capture the oxygen and capture the, the moisture, to maintain the moisture and oxygen below 1 ppm. That's the only way. Now, that kind of solution introduce our next set of problems. You look at that. You have to wear this thick glove to operate your instrument. So you have to adjust everything. You have to put all these tiny things together. And a lot of times, the, the scientific research was actually become extremely difficult, and not because of some fundamental reasons. It's because of a lot of the practical reasons. Something's too small, too big, and you want to change something. And then uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, the whole changing itself or redesign itself takes a lot of time. Or, or if, you, if, if the whole thing is difficult to put together, it takes more time. And when, when every time you have 1% of success rate and you, you have 10 different steps, they make your success rate very low. So the graduate student, uh, why do we spend five years or six years in, in school and, and uh, the actual experiment only happens in a week, right? Because most of the time we're, <laughs> we, we, we fail. We fail because we're dealing with failures. Okay. So, uh, well, the, uh, uh, the things I show you, things all the scientists that we talk about, there are successes. And then when we write paper, there was found something very interesting. When we write paper in, about AFMST and we, we submit, and then the editor always send the paper back, say, "Hey, remove all the word easy from your paper," <laughs> because it's not easy. It's easy that time. It's not easy at all. So, so sometimes we did something so difficult and we're so proud of ourselves. We put a lot of easy in our things. We use my method, use my technology. It's easy to this and that. It's not easy. Uh, well, this is one, one of the way to, um, even you put the instrument into a glove box is a gigantic work. It takes a lot of time. See, in this case, the entire front panel of the glove box is removed and they put the instrument inside the box, close it, and whenever inside is inside, whenever outside is outside, you cannot touch it anymore, right? It's, uh, uh, even you change a part, it takes a minute. Here, you change a part, it takes a week. Not easy. Uh, so this is a solution. That, well, first, uh, it, this, this whole thing is a vibration isolation. It's gigantic, it's heavy, and it's big, and you have to take the front panel. So I, I come up with a solution. So, uh, of, of, uh, uh, these are Thorlap frames, and, and this whole thing can be disassembled into pieces and every piece will fit into the, the transfer chamber of that glove box and therefore you go inside and you wear your glove and you assemble it. So the whole thing allow you to, uh, uh, the, to, to take care of the vibration, uh, vibration problem of the AFM inside glove box. This is what it looked like. And uh, the, the, this little rubber band and I, I tried a different rubber, I tried about 10 different kinds of rubber band. And the, this, these rubber band, this particular color rubber band from Walmart, not, not, well, not Walmart, Maya worked. <laughs> because it, it, it has, a, it, it, has, it allowed this whole thing to have about one hertz of, uh, of oscillation. And then at that point, you can actually 
There's a little more fancy here. You can actually achieve uh, 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 atomic lattice with AFM and atomic resolution with, with STM, actually. That's a different look of it. So this is what this piece take apart. And then uh, uh, you, can, you can put together with these tools. And it's not easy because all these screws are very small. And then this is what it looked like inside glove box. And then again, you cannot even put your head behind the instrument because you're right in front of it and you work two thick gloves and assemble this thing together. But this allows to have one ultimate test. This is a uh, atomic lattice scanning on uh, graphite. And that, uh, that's okay, now our noise level is okay with this vibration isolation. That problem is solved. Uh, next problem I mentioned before is our, these little parts, right? See, so let, let me show you the manual. Okay, this is the, the, the screen capture of the manual of our AFM combined with the electrochemistry. It says you have to bend your electrodes into this shape, right? Anybody handled the uh, lithium will tell me you cannot bend the lithium into this shape. <laughs> lithium is very soft. You handle lithium, you're like handling half the cooked noodle. <laughs> They're very soft. It does not have a shape, right? And plus, you, you really don't have hands because you have a thick gloves, you have a tweezers. That's all you have. What are you going to do, right? So, so there's many different approaches. I, I was teaching a student for the entire year and then to bend this, just to bend this, right? So your tool is not working. At that point, it was about uh, two to three years ago and uh, I, I was probably very similar to everybody sitting here. I was a chemist three years ago. Later, I become a mechanical engineer because of these frustrations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why it's funny. It did happen. <laughs> All right, this is some, some designs. Okay, so this is a solution. I took a picture from, from Lawrence Berkeley, and they are, they're, they're brilliant in doing the research. They have a lot of papers. And I was saying, hey, show me how do you do that? And they showed me this is. I look at it, and see those little nut, nuts? It's so small, and you drop, you never find it. These are the hands you're handling it. And then here, this, that's the way, their way to dealing with corrosions. You, you tape the whole thing down, so deal with cor corrosions. So that's a, an average chemist or material scientist are facing every day, day in, day out, is, is that um, the experiment is very difficult. So at that point, I say I had enough. I don't want to be a chemist. Being a chemist, have a PhD in chemistry, is a mistake. <laughs> so. I, I live in Detroit and, uh, and we have a lot of talented people, so I mixed up with a lot of workers and, and I also, also worked with a lot of 3D printers, 3D printing and so, so on and so forth. And on Thursday, I'm going to tell you this 3D printing is useless and why is that? I'll come back in Thursday. <laughs> At that point, I did not know how to do mechanical engineering. So this piece, this is a square liquid cell. Why it's a square? Because you can grab it. Simple. Right? And why this circular, and why this circular is this particular shape? Because I can find a drill bit this big and cut this. And why the graphite is there, is glued there. There's many reasons, because I, I can show you a pile of failures and why it didn't work. So that's my liquid cell. Actually it works very well, because it's a, it's a square, and then if you don't like it, you throw it away. And this is, how, this is a, a brilliant invention that I worked out with this postdoc. See this little cage? It's difficult to bend your lithium into a shape. However, you can wrap a very soft noodle around a spindle. You can do that. That's not too hard. So this is actually a little spindle that, I, that they cut from the machine. And then there's a little hole that can allow current to pass. So you wrap, wrap this thing along, um, around it and leave. See, this is lithium. Wrap around and cut and push into it. And then connect these two. So you change from bending wire into wrap something. That's much, much easier and much quick. Increase your success rate much better. So this is what this uh, uh, liquid cell looked like at that time of experiment. And I'm going to continue to show you the experiment I did. Uh, this is a cycle of a thermogram of this uh, Ishii cell. And this is first cycle, second cycle, and third cycle. I'm not an electrochemist. If you ask me a question right now, I will not know the details, but this is the uh, uh, EC cycle of a time when we did on this particular cell. And this is what we see. This is, this is the very, very first uh, experiment we did. And you see a lot of noise here because at that time I did not figure out the vibration isolation yet. So you have about a, a one angstrom, 1.5 angstrom of noise. So here's what happened. Uh, we're charging the electrode, which is a graphite, at 3 to 2.95 volts. That's graphite surface. You have a little bit of stuff happen. At 1.7, 1.65 volt, as you charge it, you started to form a little cluster here. And the graphite cells still have no change. 
and we believe something happened, and we believe it is the uh, decomposition of lithium acryl carbonate from a pollen on the surface. C is on 1.0 to 0.95 volts and so on and so forth. At about 0.5 volts, this is something happened. From here to here, there's a lot of wild driftings in the system. We don't know what happened. Later on, we find out what happened. Is that here we see a formation of little cluster. These clusters actually stick to the surface of the electrode. At a certain point, about 1.7 volts uh, right here, these, 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 these for formed this cluster, they form a crust. At this point, the crust actually leaves the surface. They delaminate it. That's what we saw. Uh, because it delaminated, we could use AFM tip to remove the first layer and expose the second layer. See what happened. And we see that the second layer has also had some changes, but this, its changes is very different. See, this is, uh, in, uh, this is um, let's see, what is this? It's pristine HOPG, has some noise. And this is discharge at 1.7 volts. You can see there's a lot of uh, steps started to increase thickness. All right, we know this atomic steps has a fixed thickness because it's, it's the size of the interatomic distance of uh, layers of uh, graphite. And why increase distance? That's because the uh, lithium ion actually inserted themselves between the two sheets of graphite. That's what we believe. And this is the model. We come up with, this is actually uh, uh, come up with uh, Dr. In of Wayne State University, we collaborate on this. So at the beginning, we will have this decomposition of uh, the lithium carbonate, the lithium carbon, uh, carbonate on the surface, and they, as they form more, another process happened, which happened in the underlying surface. We do not, we do not know when it happened because it's covered. And the, the, that, that's called the insertion of lithium ion. They actually solve it and insert themselves into the graphite and cause the graphite to curve. And at a certain point, cause the graphite layer to swell up and therefore cause the, the first top layer of SEI to delaminate. And this is another uh, uh, example of that. We actually zoom, zoom out. You can see that, see that little things. Here is in the line and there's a crust there. And then there's no obvious attachment between these two layers. As a matter of fact, in the real experiment, that it's very easy for the entire thing to come out and if the force is too high. So actually, it's confirmation of the actually two layers of SEI formation in, 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 in this experiment. Now, we use a little bit more force and remove the first layer and we'll look at the second layer. And look at the second layer. So it has a very unique, instinct look of it. It's very interesting. What does it remind you? Remind you of a bed sheet, a wrinkled bed sheet. And what the, what the tell tells us is that, that maybe it's possible that the, the, the lithium not only inserted underneath the graphite, but also inserted in the crystal structure of graphite and caused it to swell, could expand laterally. That's what the wrinkle sheet tell us. And next thing we did, we apply a little bit high force and in this little square to see, can we push it down? And that's what we did. We apply a little bit high force about 10 nanonewtons, scan small size and scan large area again, we actually push them flat. So that's an evidence that uh, these wrinkle sheets are actually not a solid material, but some uh, soft material when you apply force, you can actually squeeze out those lithium, lithium ion uh, in, in, the, in the insertion in, in, the, in the graphite sheets. Some ongoing work, and uh, uh, naturally we're going to study the, the uh, mechanical property of it using indentation, and this is the improved version of, the, of this whole liquid cell, and it looks much nicer, and uh, the entire adapter is also made of Teflon. Every single part here can be bought cheaply. It's a $3 piece of things from Spark Farm, and these are some piece, and this is a steel sheet, and the whole thing can be machined again. Uh, it's a lot of improvement, and this cage is also made much better. Uh, this this uh, design had a little cover that prevent evaporation, and this is uh, another uh, things that um, I, I tried it is to build a heater inside the inside the cell. Why we want to do that? Because the temperature actually affects your charging discharge, affects your lifespan of your battery a lot. So we said we put a heater there. At this point, we did one test after test we realize the previous research that we did before, including all the research on the market, there's some information missing. What is the information missing? Let me tell you what's missing. 
Okay, there's a heater there, right? The first experiment we did with this is that we, we try to do that without heating, we, we run the experiment before heating, right? Now, when we run one CV, the cell temperature shoot up to 65 degrees C. Now we realize all of our previous data has no temperature information. The temperature during a CV shoot out very high. So all the data we got is high temperature. So again, if you can put a heater, you can put a cooler, and there's a lot of more work you can do with this kind of thing. Uh, this is a, a design that uh, we want to study, the, 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 we want to feed oxygen underneath the porous sample, and so the, 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 the combination of things is endless. You can, you can keep pushing forward forever. And this is another thing I invented. Uh, uh, I, I went to a couple of groups and they, 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 they studied the lithium battery research, and they want to study the lithium battery research. They want to take the electrode, unpack it, and they want to stick into SEM and study the surface, or XRD, or, or XPS, okay? Now there's a problem of doing that. When you open the package, the lithium is exposed to the air. So, so people are designing different kind of combination of connectors and protections and chambers and so on and so forth to try to open the package in the glove box, connect the glove box to a XPS or SEM, open it there so the, the sample will never exposed to the air. I say, hey, don't, don't use complicated uh, solutions because any complicated solution turn itself into a complicated problem and could ruin some graduate student's life. <laughs> so I say, I'm going to think about it and, and then this is what I, uh, what I dream of. Uh, it's very simple because then you have a little cover here and you have a sample holder and you, 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 you close the sample holder and then there's a little lash here, right? And then you, you, you seal your sample in it, in your glove box and you put it in your SGM and then, then you close the door, turn on your vacuum and the whole thing pop out by itself. And, uh, application note we should end now and let that uh, be for Thursday because I think that that's really relevant to a lot of people. Great. Well, <laughs> that's <a video. laughs> All right. Anyway, um, Thursday we'll, we'll show you how to do these things. These are not difficult. You don't need a million dollar 3D machine, uh, 3D printing machines. You can do it. Uh, I did all of these in my own basement with no help from anybody else. So that's why I turned myself in. And please come to my uh, next talk. Great, well let's thank our speaker.